Hey guys, this Andrew here at Ross Motorsports in Lufkin, Texas, She's number one Bass Cat dealer in the nation. So I've had a lot of interest, a lot of questions on the touch panels. And sometimes it's customers that's bought a boat for me, it's their first Bass Cat. You know, of course I go over the boat with everybody that buys a boat. Uh, but you know, a few months down the road, they're taking their boat out for the first trip and they might have a question on the panel. So I'm gonna go over the new touch panel that is in a premium boat. Here I'm sitting in a, or this is actually a Cougar Hybrid. Uh, it's a 2021. Well, I'm gonna go over the panel, kind of explain a few things that I would do if you were to buy a boat from me. And this might help you if you buy a boat from somebody else and you just are buying a used boat and you have a question on the panel. So Hank is gonna be my cameraman. You might hear me refer to him. Uh, but he's gonna walk around here and show you. So of course in the back of the boat, we have a breaker. You turn on the breaker, it allows power for the console. Now you do have to turn on the master panel switch here. See, I'm gonna turn that on. One thing to remember is every time you turn that master power switch on at the console, the fuel tank is always gonna to go to the left side. So again, this is the Cougar Hybrid. You have two fuel tanks, a port tank and a starboard tank, but it's always gonna to go to the left side. So if your left tank is empty and you're running the right tank, uh, you go to the lake, turn your panel on, automatically it goes to the left tank. Well, if your switch is on the right tank, your gauge is going to be, your gauge isn't going to be truthful to you. So, say we're running the right tank, we always need to switch it over to which tank we're running. And also vice versa, say you've been running the right tank, uh, all practice, you know, practicing a couple of days. You hop in your boat, your left tank's full of gas, you see your gauge, you see you're full of gas, or you're running down the lake. And then, you know, your four-stroke mercury starts surging. Hey, you're out of gas. You need to stop, switch the tanks. So that's just one thing to remember. Always switch your fuel tank. So here we're going to start at aerate. Aerate pumps water from the lake through your spray bars into your live well. You have the ability to put it on manual, which continuously runs. You can put it on the five, which is five minutes between cycle. The pump will run for one minute then it turns off for five minutes and then it runs an additional minute. So there's five minutes between cycles. And if you put it on three, it's three minutes between cycles. So run for a minute, off for three minutes, or runs for another minute. Pump in is an additional way to put water in your live well. So say you stop at your first stop, uh, you catch a fish right off the bat, well, hey, you know, if your live wheels are empty, you need water in it quick, you got a, you know, seven pounder hopefully flopping around, click both of them on. Now both of these pumps are gonna be filling up your live well. Now, one thing to remember, if you have the pump in and the air rate running uh, continuously, you're gonna be pumping more water into that live well than your overflow can let out. So yes, you will completely fill the live well all the way up, water will start coming out of the top of the lids. So that's something to remember. If you're running both of them at the same time, yes, it's a quick way to fill up your live wheel, uh, but it'll pump more water in than it allows out. Now, if you do need to pump water out, you can click pump out. That'll pump water from the live wheels out into the lake. And then we have recirculate. So now you can use aerate and recirculate at the same time. So we'll put this one five minutes between and we'll click recirculate, we'll put it five minutes in between. So now we got both our spray bars cycling off and on, and it's really turning a lot of water. You know, we're keeping fresh water because the air rate is water coming from the lake into the live well. And then we have recirculates just turning the water that's in the live well. Now here you have the fan switch. Click this on, this circulates fan air underneath the front deck. It helps with mildew. It helps if you've been fishing in the rain. Now, of course, when you get to the house, best thing you do, open all your lids, get you uh, some kind of air movement going on if you have your boat in the shop. Because, you know, when you're fishing in the rain all day, you're opening lids, and, you know, you're going to your tackle. You even need to check your tackle boxes. Because when it's really a downpour, you know, you're gonna get water everywhere. You'll even get it in your shoes, your boots, wherever. Security system, I'm not gonna go over with, it's a secret. Air rate one, or I mean, accessory one, uh, turns on. Accessory one used to turn on the hand reels. They've been wiring the new boats to where accessory one does nothing. Accessory two now turns on the hand rails and turns on the lights that are in the live well. So that's gonna be what accessory two does. Used to, uh, up until probably about a month ago, Accessory one controlled your handlebar lights and controlled your live well lights. But now 
it has been on the accessory two. So test them. So since it is wired to accessory two, accessory one is going to be open. If you ever want to add anything, there are some wires underneath the dash. I believe it's orange. You can splice into. They put like a, I know Rigid made a light that goes on the, the trolling motors. Now we don't recommend it because it gets in the way of the nav light that's built in on our boats. But if you want to wire something in, you can. Now your nav lights, you click it on, it turns both of the lights on. It turns on your front nav light that's built in on a premium boat. And then we still use the, the pole light that goes in the back. Or if you want to, you can get like a Russell Marine product, put it on your power pole if you have a set of poles on your boat. Now I'm gonna honk the horn so the camera might jump. Let's not jump, Hank. We do have a loud horn right here. It works off the horn button. And then we're gonna come here to bilge. So this boat does not have a true automatic bilge pump. Right now, if this boat, you take a water hose, start flooding the boat, the boat's gonna fill full of water. Nothing's gonna kick on. To have a true automatic bilge pump, or to have it working, you need to click the button twice, puts it on auto. So if you leave this boat on auto, as the boat gets water in it, your float switch kicks on, it pumps the boat out, pumps the water out of the boat. And the reason why we do this is float switches do go bad, trash does get in the bottom, you know, might be fishing somehow, worms get in the bilge of a boat. You know, you get your old monster worm hung up in your float switch, you know, your float switch is gonna continuously run if it was wired that way. But since we have our float switch on the panel switch, we can turn it off and on. Now, of course, you click it once, turns on manual. If you got a lot of water in your boat, it's gonna kick on both the pumps. Uh, that way it pumps the boat out of water. Now, of course, your gauges, like your smart craft gauge, we have this boat. Of course, that all operates with a key switch. Some of the boats are ordered with trim gauges. Uh, trim gauges are actually option. I got a kill switch pulled by accident. Uh, but kill or trim gauges can be options. Uh, water pressure gauge is an option also. I try to order all my boats with water pressure gauges. Uh, this one we don't because we do have the smart craft gauge. It tells us everything we need to know. We do still have the fuel gauge down here and we have a trim gauge. A lot of people do like looking at a trim gauge. Your Bob's hydraulic jack plate, if the boat's equipped with it, you're gonna have your hydraulic jack plate gauge. It's gonna be here on the side. Uh, and that all turns off with master power. Now our electronics are wired in directly to the master power switches in the bilge of the boat. So if the power switch is on in the back of the boat, you can turn your graphs off uh, or turn your graphs on. These graphs are not wired in to the master panel here beside the boat. Now we're gonna go up here to the front and we're gonna touch a little base on this front panel. The main thing of this was going over the touch panel, but since we're on this, I might as well show it. Make sure the panel beside the console is turned on. Hank, let's look up here at the front. So we see this rocker switch here. This rocker switch controls our trim and our nav lights. If this rocker switch is off, our trim does not work. Make sure that switch is on for our trim to work. And then we have our nav lights, you can operate them here on the front. Of course, your battery check uh, is wired up directly behind the the trolling motor plug so you don't have to this switch does not operate the battery check battery check operates off the battery system but if you have any questions give us a shout give us a shout check out our website rossmotorsports.com give me a shout on my cell phone 936-465-5551 y'all have a good day